Hi everyone, my name's Hayden and today we're going to be talking about DevTools. In particular, the DevTools in Google Chrome, though this applies for many browsers and you can transfer the skills. This, uh, these lecture slides were prepared by Mark Gurevich at Canva, um, but today I'll be taking you through some of the content. Now DevTools are a way that we can debug, prototype and analyze pages. If you've worked in programming languages like C before, you might be familiar with GDB. It's a kind of debugger. It helps you go really deep and understand things in a lot of detail. Um, and DevTools is kind of like that, except it's significantly more powerful than probably any debugger you're likely to have come across with the kind of programming background you'd have at this point. Um, it's really exciting. It's one of those things that you, it reminds me of like, you know, playing piano or something. It's like, it's really easy to do something basic and get some value from it but you can spend years mastering the benefits of it or you know, honing your skills and there's always so much to learn. Um, but let's firstly just start playing with it. I've got some code here from a previous lecture where we did some layouts and you'll see that it looks, you know, this is our old, don't forget to sign up, chaotic CSS layouts page. One of the first things we're gonna do is open DevTools. Now opening DevTools is different on different machines. Um, generally you can open it one of two ways, which is either with a keyboard shortcut um, or by right clicking and clicking inspect or inspect element or something similar. And this opens up DevTools. I can also press F12 on this Windows computer. It's different in different computers. Now I'm gonna make our code a little bit smaller in this case today, just so we can see the extra space. But now I've opened up DevTools. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to look at in DevTools is the, um, the elements tab. And it's where we're gonna spend most of today. The elements tab is where you can essentially see all of the elements on the web page, um, the, all the raw source code and kind of break it down. And you'll see just as I move my mouse over this, the browser is smart enough to highlight those particular sections and I can click on it and move through it with my, you know, with my fingers here. So I can see, okay, well, there's a big, you know, there's the outer box and I'm just like, I can expand and um, retract. There's my inner left, my inner, my inner right is kind of hidden. My inner left is there. There's my right hand bar. My inner left has all this text inside of it. You can see the text overflows. Um, you, can, you can look through this as much as you want and it helps you analyze this, the different parts of this. You will also see that um, you don't have to kind of go and find everything through this little box here. You can actually right click on elements and click inspect and that will take you straight to the element. In this case, that took me straight to the pop-up or if I right click on this and click inspect, that takes me straight to that inner left class div. So that's what this select element is for. Um, it allows you to <coughs> uh, go deeper on some things. But let's keep moving. So in terms of um, analyzing it, you can do lots of analysis, but one of the more fun things you can do is you can actually edit the page straight from the dev tools on the right hand side here. So for instance, I can go and double click on this text and I can change it to just say, how are you and press enter and it will go and update the web page like this. Um, I can also go and add and delete things. For instance, I can find this element, I can right click on it and I can actually go duplicate element, which will create two of them. In this case that you can't really tell the difference because they're over each other, but I can also delete it by clicking delete element. And when I delete element, it will, you know, bump it around like that. I can also rearrange things by, um, uh, in this case, duplicate might work. So you can see more clearly there what duplicate does. That's pretty easy. Um, if you don't want to duplicate, you can simply click and drag something. So I can click and drag this down here. I, ooh, it's hidden now. It's very hidden to get it outside of this div. There we go. There's my blue element there. It's way down the bottom there. I've just dragged it down to a different part of the page. Um, I can edit the styles of this. I can make it longer if I'd like to. 300 pixels, 400 pixels. I could go and add more HTML inside of it if I wanted to. You can make it uh, invisible. You can hide the element, which will hide it from the page. That's kind of like visibility hidden. You can make it visible again. So you can really edit that DOM. Um, there's a fun little hack if you want to, where if you actually come up to the HTML tag at the top, you can actually double click on that. And if you add, it's not letting me edit it. We go edit as HTML. If you actually add, um, I think it's, content editable to that. Um, if you just add that to your page, then browsers are actually quite um, smart. And what they'll be able to do is they will be able to, once I just save this, good. 
um, you can actually now go and change the text on the page, which is crazy. So this is like a really easy, like, you know, GUI way to change the page. Hello there. And if you remove it, then naturally um, you can't edit the page anymore. So lots of little fun ways to edit things. You can also force the state on certain elements. So let's say for instance, that on this page, we might go and add a, um, a link to, I'll have to refresh the page here. It'll go back. Every time you refresh the page, it goes back to normal. But let's say you add a link here to Google again. So uh, when I click, don't forget to sign up, I get taken to Google. Now, obviously when I put my mouse over that at the moment, nothing interesting happens. So, you know, maybe I need to add a style there and say, hey, for the pop-up, if you see an A as a child of it, um, I would like the hover of the A that's a child of it to have no underline. So now when I move my mouse over, there's no underline. And what the slides are showing us is that we can actually go and take an element like this, we can right click on it and we can force the hover state. So this is really handy for kind of development reasons if you wanna be able to see what that is. Maybe, maybe some things are hard to hover over, maybe there's links you don't wanna click on, maybe you know, active, visited, focus, you can focus particular forms. Um, you can kind of manipulate reality as much as you want. You know? It's really like editing the matrix in a lot of ways. So for state is pretty useful. I mainly use that for, um, I think, focus. Hovers, I often just do myself, but focus is really handy to play around with. Um, most of what we've seen so far has been editing the actual HTML uh, up here. But a lot of the exciting and interesting parts are actually down the bottom here in what we call you know, the styles tab. And the styles tab is for any given element like that link, I can actually go and see all of the styles that have been declared on that, um, like this one, like the one we just wrote. So this is saying that this particular anchor tag, the link, it has text decoration none, and this is the definition that it came from, and it tells me where it was defined. In this case, it says inside a style tag. And if I click on that, it'll actually take me to where in the source code that was defined. So really, really versatile. Um, I can do things like if I right click on that, it'll show me what kind of the underlying styles are. Because remember how we said before, there's like these kind of compound styles where instead of writing background left, background right, we can just say background. We can do the exact same thing with text decoration. Text decoration is actually a series of smaller um, or like more nuanced or more specific styles. Um, so we can actually see how that happened. We can turn it on and off like this. So you can turn it on and off. You could add more styles to it where you say, you know what, when someone's hovering, I actually want it to be white. Um, so you can add things there. You can click on that and you'll get a color picker where you can go and find the relevant hex value like this. So you can go and really play around with it if you'd like to. So really, really powerful. Um, and you can also see here that the original pop-up, these are all the styles that it inherited. So we could turn some of these on or off if we wanted to. You can also see it shows you in cases where a style has been overwritten. So the pop-up had a color of white, but we've gone and added another color in a higher specificity um, definition for the color green. So it's showing you here that it's kind of been overwritten, which is, which is really helpful and cool. So that styles tab is, is crazy powerful. It's probably the most common reason I'd use Dev tools is just to play around with styles there. It saves you having to, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of tweak and manipulate a website in dev tools rather than having to update your code and refresh the page, which is really great. Right next to the styles tab is the computed styles tab. The computed styles tab uh, is more focused on what is actually rendered. So think of styles as kind of what you define or what's defined and computed is how the, um, the web browser takes that and then generates it. So for instance, there's a cursor pointer for this A element here. Cursor pointer is how that mouse changes from the little arrow to the little hand. Um, and that cursor pointer, we didn't define it. It's just saying that the browser has said it's a link, therefore I'm going to apply that style. You'll see there are um, sometimes quite a lot of computed styles. If I go show all, it will literally show you every CSS property that exists because nearly all these CSS properties have defaults, right? Like the font always has a weight, which is normal. And it's always just default, say 400, which is just normal or it's not bold. Um, lighting color, margin left, margin right, margin top. These things have to have value. So this is really useful when you wanna go really deeper. Say something doesn't make sense and you're like, hmm, I didn't apply a margin there, but it looks like there's a margin. So you can go look at the computed styles and see if there's a margin. 
And if there's a margin, you go, ah, oh, okay, so CSS is populating this for me. Now I can debug this further. So that's what the computed styles tab is for. Um, name value hints, we kind of saw this when I was like editing things. You know, if you type in M, it'll like show you all the different CSS properties. And then for each CSS property, it'll give you all the options you can have. So just to like show you that again, if I have my pop-up a hover here and I say background, I can see that there's background color and then uh, it'll give me all the different burly wood. How beautiful, the burly wood background color. Um, so the tool itself will give you lots of property hints and values. So you don't even need to Google stuff because the browser knows all of CSS, right? It knows everything. So you can just use the browser to your advantage. Um, Element state, we've already kind of talked about that, uh, except previously we kind of right clicked on things. But you know, in some cases you don't need to right click on it, you can force it down here. So I can either right click on it here or I could kind of turn it on and off here as well if I'd like to. There's so many buttons, you know, like you just can play around with this thing and get lost forever. We've seen colors, you can set box shadows dynamically. So remember in the CSS formatting lecture, we talked about box shadows and talked about how kind of interesting and complicated they are. Well, let's go and take our pop-up. What happens if we want to add an inline style? This is the equivalent of adding it to style equals, you know, of like box shadow, uh, you know, one pixel, one pixel, one pixel gray, you know? But like, that doesn't mean a lot. So what if I click on this? Now we can start playing around with the shadow. We can move the shadow around. We can increase the spread of the shadow or the blur of the shadow like that. You know, there's, there's a lot we can tweak. Um, we could, you know, make the blur really big, the spread pretty small. Um, we could then go and change the color to maybe something, you know, really gentle. We could make the color pretty transparent too. So it's very, you know, like, and it's, it's crazy. Like how easy was that? That was much easier than kind of hand programming some of these things. And you'll find more and more and more, and I discover more all the time. Now you can also see the changes you've made if you come up the top here and you go to more tools and changes. Now in this case, this usually works a little better when you kind of modify a separate file. Um, I probably made a small mistake here, but this is kind of, uh, if you've lost track of all the changes you've made, you can get a little summary list. There's other tabs here like rendering. So for instance here, you know, there's all these options like, um, Disable local fonts, disables local sources in font face, um, you know, emulate CSS media types. So you can emulate like what happens if a printer tries to load the page. Because in the past, you used to be able to set CSS for a printer and just for a user on a screen. That's how some pages print differently to how they look, particularly pages that are printed a lot. You know, like maybe booking confirmation pages look much nicer, but they don't get printed that way to save on ink. Um, it's just like this endless, pit of things you can do. Now, there's more tabs here on the in the dev tools, but most of what you're going to be focused on with CSS is the elements. But just as a quick point, console is going to be where we can debug a lot of JavaScript. Sources don't really use a ton. This is fairly complicated. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Network is really useful later in the course. You can actually see all the kind of pages that are needed to load it. In this case, our page.html is just one page, but if you're importing files, this becomes really useful because you can see the page that you've uh, requested, you can see how it went, you can see the URL, um, you can see the response, it gives you the source code that was loaded. This is really, really useful. Um, Lighthouse is a SEO tool, really great for determining if your website's good. We're gonna chat about that later. Uh, application is also pretty useful because this is where we can see things like cookies and local storage, which you'll learn about soon. Um, cache storage, notification, it's just endless, right? Payment, what is, I've never even looked at this one, right? Payment handler, push messaging, like it just keeps going. So don't be overwhelmed, um, go and play around in your own time, but mostly get comfortable with this elements tab because that elements tab is where you can see everything. Um, not just the computed styles, the, the raw styles. Um, oops. We've got, you know, animations. Like, it's just never ending, right? Which is a good thing. I'm sure, I'm sure that's fun. And look, even here, before we wrap up, you can see that each element, it'll show us that's the size of the element. That's the padding, 10 pixels at the top. There's no border, there's no margin. And then here is the, what's the outside here? I can make that slightly bigger for you. 
um, the position, you know, the position on the page. So that's the position fixed setting it. And you'll notice that as the page resizes, those numbers change because they're computed in real time. So yeah, keep exploring, keep having fun. Hopefully that's a good starting point for you. Um, definitely use the element tab to debug your work because you'll find it so much easier than just changing values, hoping that you can figure things out. Good luck.